You're tuned in to Janet TV with Coach D. This is Janet TV on the radio, and you're listening to Bring It In with Coach D, where we catch up with coaches and athletes from around the world. Well, there are less than two weeks left until the 2014 Sochi Winter Olympics. On today's show, my co-host Heather and I will recap top stories going into Sochi. Heather, I think we have to start with the safety of the athletes. With so many concerning events happening in Sochi, even before the Games, how do you think the Olympians are feeling as they make their way to Russia? Uh, I mean, that's a good question. I think that they're focused on their training at this point. I mean, we're so close. Um, most of them are already there, if not transitioning over there. Um, but I think mostly that they're not going to be worried about that. What I think they're worried about right now is their family. You know, any families that are coming over there to, to watch them to eat in this once in a lifetime thing, I mean, that's the concerning part. Like, is my family going to be okay? You know, obviously the athletes are like the biggest concern of the Olympics. So they're really going to protect the athletes. But, you know, what about the people? Well, like you said, they're taking every precaution to protect our athletes and the State Department security personnel will be accompanying athletes to every event as well as every every venue, along with the plan to evacuate the athletes if it comes to that. So, as you said, the athletes are probably the safest of everybody going over there. It's the, the friends and families that are probably choosing to watch it at home. You can't blame them. You know, uh, one, it's in Sochi, Russia. Uh, which is a, I think is one of their vacation places for the summer. So it's not really that cold, which is ridiculous that they have it in the first place. Don't get me started. The social government going on right now, you know, whatever you do or don't believe, you know, yesterday on the news I saw that the Sochi mayor was guaranteeing that there are no gays in Sochi, so, which is obviously got to be a great relief to so many people, which is ridiculous. But you got two parts to it. You've got the Russian government that doesn't seem to be very inclusive for all people. And then you've got the terrorist sector. So, I mean, it, it's an all-around just bad, scary situation. you got to wonder, like, why is it there? Well, if you were an athlete, could you choose to go? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I don't think that's a question. Like, I think if you were to poll every single one of those athletes, there's never a question in their mind. I mean, this comes around every four years, you know, the odds of you making it again are so small, but if you do make it, you're going. There's no way it ends your butt. I'd go. Well, Heather, uh, we are going to make a statement as far as uh, the outfits that we're wearing. Have you seen them? They're made by Ralph Lauren this year. And let me try and explain to those who haven't seen them. They feature a knitted cardigan with red, cream, and navy colors. The cardigans look like pieces of the flag just splattered all over it paired with a cream cotton turtleneck sweater, slim fitting white fleece athletic pants bearing the Team USA label, black leather boots with bright red laces, and a cotton belt with American graphics on it. There's also a reindeer hat. Heather, it screams America for sure. I like everything except for the, the cardigan. Are we sending athletes or models to Sophie? What do you think? Both. Uh, you know, I saw these things, and if you haven't seen them, check them out. It's absurd. Um, <laughs> these things would win at another Christmas sweater party. I mean, they're that hideous. But, they're, I mean, it's, in a way, they're so hideous, they're awesome. Just because it's so bizarre what we're wearing. Uh, I really hope they're warm, but, again, like I said, it's a tropical place, so they've had to pump in all the snow to come do that. So it's not really that cold. Check them out. I mean, seriously, it looks like a second grader probably made a montage of the American flag, and that's what came of it. Maybe they're made in the USA this time. They made sure that they made them in the USA this year. Oh, okay, well, we're not really. But it, of course, doesn't matter what the Olympians wear. It matters how they perform. A sport to watch is the women's flop club team. The coaches were smart to bring in three brakemen that converted from trucks. Most notably, three-time Olympian Lauren Williams who won gold in the 4 by 100 meter relay at the London Olympics in 2012 and silver in the 100 meters in Athens in 2004. And hurdler Lolo Jones, who fell short in 2008 and the 2012 Summer Games. Heather, what do you think about this strategy and also getting familiar names to represent the Buffalo team? Well, it's really smart. I mean, it's just really smart. One, 
you're getting the notoriety that comes with Lolo Jones, who can be a polarizing figure. I personally, I love her. I think she's great. I think her story is fantastic. She's come from literally nothing. Made it to the Olympics twice. Now this is her third time. I mean, that first in 2008. She, how bad is that? You clip your heel at the little last shuttle to lose the gold. She's great. You get Williams in there, and you automatically add speed. You automatically add power. So, you know, I think Lolo had talked about her gaining weight to do this, to push better. Um, it's perfect for them. They transition so well into what they require for bobsled. Like, I've, I've done a little bit of research and have some friends that are kind of into it. And, you know, track and field is a lot of Olympic lifting, a lot of high pulls, a lot of box jumps, a lot of, you know, cleans. And that's exactly the motion that you use for bobsled. So it makes sense that, hey, you get a fast person that can do these things really well, it's going to transition well. I, I mean, if they win, it'd be so awesome. I think that bobsled would become the winter training sport for most track and field athletes. That would be amazing. And then our bobsled team would just dominate. I think it's great. Smart all around. Well, with Lindsay Vaughn out, most would worry who would fill her shoes. Stepping out of Vaughn's shadow is the youngest American following world champion ever and a winner of seven World Cup races at the age of 18, Michaela Schifrin. She may be young, but she is the face and the future of U.S. team. Heather, what a great opportunity for Michaela to stand out on the world stage. Yeah, I mean, Lindsay Vaughn can attest to that, right? I mean, she was an unknown. And then she went to the Olympics, tore it up, and everybody loved her. So, hopefully that can happen for Michaela. You know, that's just the passing of the torch, and unfortunately, uh, that's why Lindsay Vaughn's not here, is because of an injury. This is kind of a cycle, you know, that this is why we watch the Olympics. These unknown people, we watch these sports we don't care about normally, and we get enthralled in their story, we get enthralled in the music, and we, you know, become super rah-rah USA supporters, which is awesome. And so this could work out really well for Michaela. I hope she rises to the occasion, you know, and no idea how people are going to react, but I hope she does it. I would expect her to do nothing but amazing things. Well, good luck to all the athletes representing the USA. We will be keeping you updated on the athletes so they compete in a few weeks. Stay tuned to Janet TV. For my co-host, Heather, I'm Coach C, and you're listening to Janet TV on the radio. You've been tuned in to Janet TV on the radio with Coach D.